But Aunt Jen had stopped on the front porch, picked her up, and carried her, shielding her face as though she were a baby in the glaring sun. In her room, Aunt Jen set Charlie down and closed the bedroom door behind them. She told her to pack her suitcase, and Charlie had cried because all her things could never fit into that small case. We can come back for the rest later, Aunt Jen said, her impatience leaking through as Charlie hovered in decidedly at her door, trying to decide which t-shirts to bring along. They had never come for the rest. Charlie mounted the stairs, heading to her old bedroom. The door was par particularly cracked, and as though she op and as she opened it, 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 she had a giddy feeling of displacement. As though her younger self might be sitting there among her toys. Might look up and ask Charlie, who are you? Charlie re went in. Like the rest of the house, her bedroom was untouched. The walls were pale pink and the ceiling, which sloped dramatically on one side to follow the line of the roof, was painted to match. Her old bed still stood against the wall beneath a large window. The mattress was still intact though the sheets were gone. The window was cracked slightly open, and the rotting lace curtains wa wavered in the gentle breeze from outside. There was a dark water stain in the paint beneath the window, where the weather had gotten in over the years, betraying the house's neglect. Charlie climbed onto the bed and forced the window shut. It obeyed with a screech, and Charlie stepped back and turned her attention to the rest of the room, to her father's creations. Their first night in the house, Charlie had been afraid to sleep alone. She did not remember the night, but her father had told her about it often enough that the story had taken on the quality of memory. She sat up and wailed until her father came to find her, until he scooped her up and held her and promised that he would make sure she was never alone again. The next morning, he took her by the hand and led her to the garage, where he set to work keeping that promise. The first of his inventions was a purple rabbit, now gray with age from years of sitting in the sunlight. Her father had named him Theodore. He was the size of a three-year-old child, her size at the time. And he had plush, plush fur shining eyes, and a dapper red bow tie. He didn't do much, only waved a hand, tilted his head to the side, and said in her father's voice, I love you, Charlie. But it was enough to give her a night watcher, someone to keep her company when she could not sleep. Right now, Theodore sat in a white wicker chair in the far corner of the room. Charlie waved at him, but not activated. He did not wave back. After Theodore, the toys get more complex. Some worked and some did not. Some seemed to have parchment glitches, permanent glitches, while others simply did not appeal to Charlie's childish imagination. She knew her father took those back to his workshop and recycled them for parts, though she did not like to watch them be dismantled. But the ones that were kept, though she loved, they were here now, looking at her expectantly smiling. Charlie pushed a button beside her bed and gave, and gave way stiffly, but nothing happened. She pushed it again, holding it down longer, and this time across the room, and with the very cre creak of metal on metal, the unicorn began to move. The unicorn, Charlie named him Stanley for some reason she could no longer remember, was made of metal, and he... It had been painted glossy white. He trundled around the room on a peculiar track, bobbling, bobbing his head stiffly up and down. The track squealed as Stanley rounded the corner and came to a stop beside the bed. Charlie knelt beside him and came to a stop beside the bed. Wait. Charlie knelt beside him on the floor and patted his flank. His glossy white paint was chipped with and peeling, and his face had given over to rust. His eyes were livingly gazing out of the decay. 
You need a new coat of paint, Stanley, Charlie said. The unicorn stared ahead, unresponsive. At the foot of the bed, there was a, real, a wheel made of patched met together metal. It had always reminded her of something she might find on a submarine. Charlie turned to it. It stuck for a moment, then gave way, rotating as it always did. And across the room, the smallest closet door swung open. Out sailed Ella on her trek. A doll, a child-sized doll with, bearing a teacup and saucer in her tiny hands like an offering. Ella's plaid dress was still crisp, and her patient leather shoes still showed. Perhaps the closet had protected her from the damage of the dam. Charlie had had an identical outfit back when she had back when she and Ella were the same height. Hi, Ella, she said softly. As the wheel unwound, Ella retreated to the closet again. The door swung behind her. Charlie followed her. The closets had been built to align with the slant of the ceiling, and there were three of them. Ella lived in the short one, which was about three and a half feet tall. Next to, next to it was one foot or so taller, and a third closest to the bedroom door was the same height as the rest of the room. She smiled, remembering, Why do you have three closets? John had demanded the first time he came over. She looked at him blankly, confused by the question. Cause, cause that's how many there are, she said finally. She pointed deceptively to the tallest one. That one's Ella's anyway, she added. John nodded, satisfied. Charlie shook her head and opened the door to the middle closet. Or she tried to. The knob stopped with a jolt. It was locked. She rattled it a few times, but gave it, but gave up without much conviction. She stayed crouched low to the floor and glanced up at the tallest closet, her big girl closet that she would someday grow into. You won't need it until you're bigger, her father would say, but the, that day never came. The door now hung open slightly, but Charlie didn't disturb it. It hadn't opened for her. It had only given way to time. As she moved to stand, she noticed something shiny, half hidden under the rim of the middle door. She leaned forward to pick it up. It looked like a broken piece of circuit board. She smiled slightly. Nuts and butts, bolts, scraps, and parts had turned up all over the place. Once upon a time, her father oh, had stray parts in his pockets. He would carry around something that he was working on, set it down, and forget where it was. Or worse, put something aside for safekeeping, never to be seen again. There was also a strand of her hair clinging to it. She unwound it carefully from the tiny lip of metal it was stuck on. Alright guys, in the next part, we're going to read the second paragraph of page 10. Bye guys. Peace.